Okay, thank you very much for bearing with us and waiting. Um, I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, Helen Kennedy Holloman, who is the School Head of Degree Apprenticeships at uh, Leeds Beckett University. And obviously, Helen is going to talk about higher and degree apprenticeships. Thank you. Okay, just waiting for the presentation to load. Excellent, okay. So, um, welcome everybody. Um, my name's Helen Kennedy Holloman. I'm the Head of Apprenticeships for the Business School at Leeds Beckett University. And I've also got Gaynor Cross with me today. Um, Gaynor Cross is the course director for our new Digital Marketing Degree Apprenticeship, which we're very <laughs> excited about. Um, that will be launching in June, so more about that in the presentation. And we've also got Jess Stott with us as well. Um, Jess is um, a business development executive in our Central Apprenticeship team. Um, now, I do have to let you know there were supposed to be two of us presenting today and one of, one of them has um, unfortunately not been able to make it. So the first half of the presentation, I'm actually using somebody else's slides. Um, so bear with me on that. The second half is my slides. Um, so I'll do the best I can with the first half, okay? So um, Adam can't make it. Um, you've already met me. You've met um, Jess and Gaynor. So what is a degree apprenticeship? So it's a job with training. Um, you'll hear the phrase KSBs a lot with degree apprenticeships, knowledge, skills and behaviours. Every apprenticeship has something called a standard. So there's an example of some apprenticeship standards there, um, building services, civil engineer, chartered surveyor. And in those standards, there's a list of knowledge, skills and behaviours. And apprenticeship, um, we, we measure your progress against those knowledge, skills and behaviours across the apprenticeship journey. Um, by the time you get to the end of the apprenticeship, you will have achieved all the knowledge, skills and behaviours and you will be occupationally competent. Um, all apprenticeships have something called an end point assessment. Um, I'll do a little bit more on that later. And there are currently over 200 degree apprenticeship standards. So, how do they work? So you have to have an employer. That's, that's the first thing, um, because your employer will be paying your apprenticeship um, tuition fees, your, so you don't come out of university with any debt. Um, and you'll get that wonderful work experience as well. If you are um, working more than 30 hours a week, your employer has to give you six hours per week off the job training. So that equates roughly to about a day a week. Now, arguably, one day is, is more than six hours. A day, a, a day of work is probably about seven and a half hours. Um, but most employers that we work with would give you the whole day. They don't say, come back into work for an hour and a half at the end of the day. Um, so you get six hours per week. And if you work fewer than 30 hours per week, you get 20% of your time off the job. So um, we have degree apprenticeship assessors. They are like progress coaches who look after you throughout your apprenticeship journey. And benefits, we've already said, you haven't got any tuition fees. You're earning money while you're learning. So you're being paid and you're not accruing any debt. Um, you get real world experience. And then you've got, I think, apprentices have got better career prospects than if you do a straight degree. Because with an apprenticeship, you're doing the same degree that you would do if you went down the traditional route, um, but you're getting that wonderful work experience as well, which looks really good on your CV, and you, you've got those transferable skills. Um, so you need an employer. They are intensive programmes, so I myself, and I'm an apprentice, um, a mature one, um, but I'm currently doing the, um, right at the end of the level seven, senior leader apprenticeship. So my employer, Leeds Beckett University, um, give me one day per week, as, as study leave um, and as part of that qualification I will gain a, an MBA and um, so the, the the apprenticeships that we offer at university are higher and degree apprenticeships so you're looking at apprenticeships that are underpinned by a degree um, or depending on the level um, a postgraduate diploma so it's very different experience than a, a traditional um, course so for example if you're an apprentice um, you're not eligible for student loans, for example, because you're, you're being paid, you're earning a wage. Um, you wouldn't stay in the university halls of residence. Um, you, you are incredibly busy because you're holding down a job and studying at the same time. So it's, it's not an easy route, um, but it's a very re rewarding one and you're getting lots of experience as you go along. So um, 
At Leeds Beckett, we were inspected by Ofsted in November 2022, um, and we received a good across the board. Um, we've currently got about a thousand apprentices on programme across the three schools that offer degree apprenticeships. So um, I'm the head of apprenticeships for the business school, but there's also an equivalent of me in the School of Health and also the School of Built Environment, Engineering and Computing. We've got 22 different degree apprenticeships across the university. Um, we have a central team, that's the team that Jess works for, um, so they will help you with your onboarding and then each school has a dedica dedicated degree apprenticeship unit based within the school. Okay. So, um, these are apprenticeships um, not in my area, but in the university we offer the advanced, that, that should be clinical practitioner, the advanced clinical practitioner, environmental health, nursing, social work and youth work, so that's in our school of health. In the business school we've got the chartered manager degree apprenticeship, that's the level six. We've got the new level six digital marketer starting in June um, and we've also got the level seven senior leader and we are currently in the very, very early stages of deciding whether we're going to develop the level seven senior people professional apprenticeship as well. Um, but that's early stages at the moment. And then in our School of Built Environment, Engineering and Computing, you've got the building um, services, building su surveying, civil engineering, quantity surveyor, digital technology solutions and real estate and property management. Okay. So, I'm going to focus on the business school, so these, this is where I get onto my slides, um, because that's the school that, that I work in. However, if any of you have got queries on the School of Health or Built Environment, we have got Jess from the central team who can answer any questions on those. So, in the business school, um, we've got the Level 7 Senior Leader, which is underpinned by a postgraduate diploma in business administration. Now, it used to be the case that apprenticeship used to have an MBA in it. So that's the one that I'm on. Um, and I joined before the MBA was removed. Um, however, the MBA is now, the government have decided to not offer an MBA as part of that qualification. So it's now underpinned by a postgraduate diploma. However, if somebody did that apprenticeship and got their PG dip and then decided that they wanted to top up to an MBA, um, they can do that by taking an extra 60 credit module but that 60 credits that you would have to pay for that because it's not covered by the apprenticeship levy. So up until the PG dip, all the costs would be covered. Um, level, and that is a two-year apprenticeship. Um, level 6 Chartered Manager is a four-year apprenticeship, um, and that is underpinned by a BA Honours Business Management Practice. Um, and just to make you aware that these qualifications here they're exactly the same qualifications that you would do if you were just doing a straight degree. So it's no different. It's just that you have it's all paid for and you're getting the work experience as well. Um, we've got a level five operations and departmental manager apprenticeship. However, at the moment, the reason that one's got a little asterisk next to it is because that's currently only available. Um, we only offer that to one company at the moment, but we may open it out further down the line. And the one that I really want to speak to you about today is Level 6 Digital Marketer because that's brand new and that's launching in June. So before I move on to Digital Marketer, um, if we've got any parents, employers, parents who are employers in the room, um, we've got some events that we're holding to promote this apprenticeship and the dates for those events are 27th of February, 16th of April and 4th of June. You can find information on that on our Leeds Beckett website. Um, those events will include lunch. There will be a keynote speaker yet to be confirmed, probably a marketing author. I'm speaking to a few at the moment, so I'm just waiting for confirmation. Um, and we'll be giving you tasters of what we teach on that apprenticeship. So that's the apprenticeship that Gainer is the course director for. So we'll be running workshops on things like um, artificial intelligence, Google Ana Analytics and Chat GPT. Um, so please bear those dates in mind if you want to know more, if you want to offer, um, if you want to take on an apprentice or, or if you're um, wanting to do the apprenticeship. So a little bit more on digital marketer. So I'm stealing a little bit of Gaynor's thunder here because this is her course, so please feel free to chip in. Um, 
So you can see level four, that's the first year of the apprenticeship. Um, level four would be introduction to marketing communications, marketing and data analytics, marketing essentials, digital marketing, and then you've got the digital marketing tools and techniques running along the bottom. Level five is the second year of your apprenticeship. So I won't read all the, all the slides because you can see what's on there, but you know, you've got your websites and your customer journeys and your content marketing. And then level six is the final year of, of the apprenticeship. And you can see the modules that you've got on there. And where you see review, I mentioned earlier that we've got um, degree apprenticeship assessors. They will meet with the apprentice every 12 weeks and the apprentice's employer. Um, so they conduct something called a tripartite progress review where they check in, making sure if, if, if there's any issues or concerns, making sure that the apprentice has got the opportunity to apply what they are learning in these modules in the workplace. And that's why we invite the employer. So make, making sure that the apprentice gets to put the theory into action in the workplace. So we've got these regular touch points along the way, um, which is um, it's kind of like the pastoral support for the apprentice throughout their journey. Um, so off the job training, an employer has to give you, um, it's, it's a statutory requirement that if you're doing an apprenticeship, you get off the job time. Um, but it has to be time that is during the apprentice's normal working hours, excluding overtime. So if you normally work Monday to Friday, nine till five, your 20% off day has to fall within Monday to Friday, nine to five. You can't be expected to do it in the evenings or on the weekend or anything like that. It's within your, your working time. For the new digital marketer degree apprenticeship, that's going to be a day release apprenticeship. And I think it's going to be Tuesdays. So it would be on campus every Tuesday and then Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, the apprentice would be with their employer. The other apprenticeships that we offer in the business school are what we call block release. So the apprentice comes in every roughly every six weeks for, for, for three days. So we've got block and then we've got day release. Um, so normal working hours are your paid hours excluding overtime. We've already covered the fact that if, if the employer were to give the bare minimum, they would have to give you six hours per, per week. But most employers tend to give a little bit more. Um, I've just had the five minute warning, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. So all of these things are included in the off the job. So when you're coming in and um, attending lectures in the university, that counts in your off the job time. Um, if you're, sh you get a mentor in, in the workplace as well. So if you're shadowing your workplace mentor, um, all things like that, time that you spend researching and writing your assignments, all of that is, is included in your off the job time. I won't. One thing I will mention um, is under the apprenticeship funding rules, if you don't have English and maths at grade C, 4 or equivalent GCSE on entry to the apprenticeship, um, we would, you, you need to have those before you sit your endpoint assessment. So if somebody's got like a, a D in English and a D in maths, in the business school, we would still be able to take you, but you would be required to do level two functional skills. However, in our other schools, um, Built Environment and Engineering and the School of Health, they wouldn't take um, an apprentice unless they had those qualifications. But in the business school, we do. And in the business school, we would put you through the level two. OK. I've talked about reviews. You get those every 12 weeks to make sure that you're on track and we look at your attendance and your grades and making sure that you're getting your time off the job, <coughs> making sure that you're getting the right opportunities in the workplace. So all of that is covered every 12 weeks in your progress review. And then the end point assessment, all apprenticeships have something at the end called an end point assessment. And it's when we look at your apprenticeship journey, making sure that you've hit all those knowledge, skills and behaviours along the way. We will consult with your employer to make sure that you're occupationally competent. Um, and if you had to do English and maths, we'd make sure that you've got all that. So we make sure that you've passed all your modules, everything is in order. And then we would put you forward for an endpoint assessment. Um, and just to give you an example, on the digital marketer apprenticeship, the endpoint assessment is a work-based project. 2,000 words, plus or minus 10%, um, and you do a presentation as well, and then you have an interview. Um, but each apprenticeship has its own, they all have an endpoint assessment, it's different for each apprenticeship. Um, so you get your underpinning qualification, so you get your degree certificate, and then when you do the endpoint assessment, that's when you get your apprenticeship certificate. 
at the end. Um, I've spoken very quickly. I'm just going to, I think I've got a minute. Um, so, yes, benefits any employers in the room. Um, you can train people the way that you want to in your business. Um, you can attract um, better talent because if people think you're going to pay for them to do a qualification, it's, it's going to attract them to your organisation. Um, you can take on existing employees on an apprenticeship or you could take on a new person um, and you can use it for succession planning. And for apprentices, you've got the hands-on experience, you've got those lovely transferable skills, you're earning money, you're not accruing any debt um, and you're improve, improving your employability prospects. So Leeds Beckett, again, successful Ofsted. We've been delivering apprenticeships since 2017. Um, we've got a central team um, for apprenticeships and each school has also got an apprenticeship team so we've got lots of support. Um, we work with employers to design apprenticeships so we make sure that we, we are teaching relevant skills that the apprentices will need in today's workplace. Um, you get a credible qualification awarded by Lise Beckett. We climbed 40 odd places in the um, Complete University Guide last year. We're Ofsted good um, and we've got the Mental Health Race Equality Charter and Athena Swan. So that was really quick because I only had 15 minutes. It's a good job I'm Welsh and I can speak fast. Um, but if anybody's got any questions, please um, shout out. Okay, thank you. Are there, are there any questions for Helen? <laughs> Stunned to silence. Take one and yeah. more information. There's a sign up sheet. Mm. Uh, we can follow up with information with yeah. um, all of the, the data. So we're, we're going to stand over there basically. So if anybody wants to ask a question that they didn't want to ask in front of the whole room, we're over there. So just come and see us. <coughs> and okay. you do have a stand downstairs, don't you? We have well. a stand downstairs uh, as well. Stand 19A yeah. is Leeds Beckett University. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Our next speaker is Hundo. Uh, Amelia is going to talk to us about virtual work experience.